What's up, everybody? Aloha. Welcome to the Fit to Fat to Fit Experience podcast. I'm your host, Drew Manning. And I'm your co-host, Lynn Manning. Thank you guys for joining us here on the podcast for another great episode. We really hope you guys enjoy today's episode with Mark Devine. We we know we did, of course. Um, this episode is a great episode, you guys, because it's very unique. Uh, Mark Devine is a, f- a former Navy SEAL commander. Uh, you look at this guy and you're intimidated, right? <laughs> he is like he, he's like the epitome of what a Navy SEAL looks like and 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 acts like. But anyways, here's a little bit about Mark, so you guys kind of know who he is. Uh, he's a New York Times bestselling author. Um, he was ranked the number one trainee of SEAL Buds class uh, number class number one seventy, um, and uh, he has such such an amazing story as a former Navy SEAL commander. So many cool stories. We kind of dive into that a little bit, but okay. So he is originally from upstate New York with a degree in economics from Colgate University and an MBA in finance from New York University Stern School of Business. Uh, his, his actually his first career was a CPA. A lot of people don't know that about him, uh, but he went on to f- to um, create something called Seal Fit and Kokoro Yoga uh, is uh, uh, his new book coming out soon in, on April twelfth. Um, but man, there's uh, there's so much you guys need to know, or there's so much about Mark that you guys um, would uh, find his story very interesting. Uh, and in today's episode, we kind of dive into a little bit about his background, how he started implementing yoga on his deployments, and how that calmed down his anxiety uh, going into to war areas using yoga and breathing techniques and meditation to calm himself down and kind of created this movement. Yeah, and even though he's helped, obviously, he's he's really helped people in the military and veterans, um, especially with PTSD. But what I love is that he's used this technique and he's he's brought it into the mainstream everyday life, whether you're a soccer mom or you're a CPA um, and in the business world, no matter what foundation you come from everybody can benefit from going inwards and i love and you'll you'll hear me ask him about it i love talking to somebody that is the epitome of a guy's guy you know a navy seal that finds you know finds himself through meditation and yoga and kind of transforms his life that way and we kind of give just different tips and insight that you can apply on how to do the same thing in your life exactly yeah he talks about how to create an unbeatable mind how to become mentally stronger and the benefits of implementing things like yoga and meditation in your life. So you take this Eastern culture, implement it into our, you know, Western society. You know, a lot of us think it's woo-woo or a little bit weird. But if someone like Mark Devine can do this, you know, I promise you a lot of us can benefit from these kinds of things. Because Lynn and I have experimented with this the past year or so. And it's been a huge benefit to us on a mental, emotional, spiritual level. Very healing. So many practical um implications and benefits that we've noticed so anyways a great episode before we dive into today's episode you guys our show sponsors super excited about our new sponsor keygenix uh keygenix.com so keygenix is a product i've been experimenting with it, they're exogenous ketones so basically uh we've talked about the ketogenic diet a little bit <clears throat> basically your body can run off of two different types of fuels uh glycogen from you know or glucose from carbs or ketones when your body is, does not have any glucose available <clears throat> and ketones are a more efficient fuel source for your body for your mind and we've talked about this uh dr dom diagostino who was on the podcast a couple weeks ago we talked about the science behind the ketogenic diet now typically it takes about four or five days to get into ketosis you guys but basically ketogenics has found a way to hack that and has found a way to get you into ketosis within 60 minutes of taking this product so it definitely bypasses that four to five days of the transition switching off from glucose to ketones, which can be difficult for a lot of people out there. You guys, uh, people experience things like the keto flu, for example, they don't feel 100%, <clears throat> which is normal because your body has been running off of glucose for years and years and years or decades now. And to run off ketones, it takes some time to transition. So Kegenix makes that very easy, you know, um, and they've allowed me, my podcast listeners, uh, they've allowed us a 15% off discount code if you use the code fit to fat to fit That's F-I-T number two, F-A-T number two, F-I-T, just like my brand. The only discount code for 15% off that you'll find out there. Um, some people will give away 10% off codes, but mine is the only one for 15% off. So definitely check them out at kegenics.com. Use the code fit to fat to fit 
try this product out. Um, it's it's like it's di- totally different than any other supplement you've ever tried because it puts your body in a different metabolic state, a different state of mind. Um, it's not like a pre workout. It's not like protein. It's a different energy source for your body that um, that. Like I said, there's nothing else like it out there. So check it out, ketogenics.com. Our next show sponsor is... is dollarworkoutclub.com. I know you guys are pretty familiar with that since you follow Drew and I most likely. Dollarworkoutclub.com is an online fitness platform. You guys, as you know, it's just $1 a week. And for a dollar a week, you get five at-home workouts done at a beginner, intermediate, and advanced level. So anyone can participate. You get five healthy recipe videos along with the written instruction and five motivation or fitness tip videos to kind of just keep you in the know and also keep you motivated throughout. You get this every week for just a dollar. There's no contracts, no hidden fees. We have amazing testimonials and before and after pictures on our site. So go check that out. And now let's get to talking to Mark. All right, you guys, we have Mark Devine here on the Fit to Fat to Fit Experience podcast. How are you doing today, Mark? I'm doing great, Drew. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I'm actually really excited to have you on. Um, So just a little bit of background of how I actually heard about you or actually met you was that um, you CrossFit, you gave like a little seminar up there and I had the pleasure of being in the audience, listening to your story. And I had heard of seal fit before that, but then after hearing you speak, just made me so much more interested. So I started doing some research on it and super excited to introduce Mark divine and seal fit and everything else you have going on to my community. Um, and all the, the things that you talk about, I want to, you know, implement and teach people how they can, uh, learn these concepts from you, who's a, a former Navy SEAL and, uh, knows a lot about mental toughness to your, and I want to relate that to your average person, which is pretty much my community, our community here on the Fit to Fit, to Fit Experience podcast. So, um, the first question I have for you, Mark, um, I kind of want to talk about your, your new book, which is coming out April 12th. And I, I didn't have a chance to read the whole thing. But there was one part that really intrigued me, and it kind of talks about your story of how you, as a Navy SEAL, started doing yoga. And I want I was wondering if you could kind of tell us that part of the story of, you know, you being in, in, in the Navy SEALs and you're on deployment and where the idea of yoga uh, on these deployments came from, Sure, if that's okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's a great place to start. First, it's important to note that I I was an active duty SEAL for about half my career. I I retired in 2011 as a commander after 20 years. But I started doing um, yoga in 1999, I think roughly 99. And the genesis of that, Drew, was um, really the martial arts. I was a a long-term martial artist. I started the martial arts when I was about 20. And my first martial arts experience was was extraordinary. And I, I don't... I mentioned this in the book, um, where I really had the privilege of working with a grand master, an enlightened, what I would say, an enlightened master, um, who was 10th degree black belt, who founded the style of karate that I was training in. And he had really a cool developmental approach to the whole, um, to the whole experience, right? And so we spent, you know, almost, not quite, but a, a good chunk I was going to say an equal part of our time, but it wasn't quite an equal part. But it was a, a good chunk of time, you know, meditating and and discussing, you know, mental and spiritual development as we did, you know, in hard training, uh, you know, practicing the physical moves and fighting and stuff like that. And that was prior to my going into the Navy SEALs. So I, I, I earned my black, literally earned my black belt. And then that very month, I was on a train to Officer Canada School and then off to SEAL training. And the training that he, he gave me helped me so much at, at SEAL training. I mean, that combined with some other experiences I had as a competitive athlete really made the SEAL training um, super fun for me. You know, people are dropping like flies. <laughs> and I'm enjoying this, right? I got a smile a mile wide on my face. And I graduated as number one honor man in my class, or number one grad was honor man in my class. And only 19 of us made it out of 185 who started. So it was a really powerful kind of formative experience for me in my mid-20s to have that, that kind of mental focus and resiliency to, to dominate the hardest physical training in the world, which was the Navy SEAL program. At any rate, you know, throughout my active duty years, I was super busy, as you can imagine. You know, SEALs are deployed constantly 11 months out of the year I was gone you know I was in 45 different countries it was really extraordinary and then um and so I really couldn't keep up that training you know and and we had a lot of cool training that we did ourselves but you know I still kind of yearned for that martial arts experience that I had 
back in uh, Manhattan before I joined the SEALs. And incidentally, I was, I was working as a CPA at that time. I didn't join the SEALs until I was about – that's a whole different story. Anyway, so when I, I left active duty um, because of my marriage, and I wanted to preserve my marriage. And marriages don't work out, incidentally, very well in the SEALs. Very high divorce rate, as you can imagine. And I wanted to preserve my marriage, so I stayed in the reserves to keep my toe in the special forces world. And I, I went off back into the business world. At any rate, that gave me some grounding, and now I'm, I'm finding myself at home and, and you know, working maybe 50, 60 days a year for the SEALs. The rest of the time, I was able to get back into an entrepreneurial you know, venture. And so I started looking for a martial art, and I settled in San Diego, whereas my martial art that I had done was in Manhattan. And I just couldn't find anything, anything remotely close in San Diego. And so um, I noticed that there was a yoga studio, you know, literally a few hundred yards from my home. And I thought, I wonder, you know, I wonder what this yoga thing is about. And then I came across a book by a fellow named Paramahansa Yogananda who founded the Self-Realization Fellowship. And I figured, you know, with this, with the guy, if his name is Yogananda, he probably knows something about yoga. <laughs> so I read this book and it was extraordinary, right? It was, it was just one of those books that everyone should read. In fact, it was the only book that Steve Jobs had on his iPad that he would read when he traveled. Extraordinary oh, book wow. about the, the, you know, the roots of yoga and different yogis and and uh, some of the uh, hmm. development that happened when you practice yoga. And it sounded to me a lot like the martial arts. And I learned later that the martial arts really, I mean, one narrative, and I believe this narrative, is that a fellow uh, a yogi named Bodhidharma made his way through Tibet and ended up at the Shaolin Monastery and meditated for six years. And he, uh, the monks were so profoundly impressed with him, he taught them what became Chan, which is essentially Zen. And uh, then taught them um, a series of physical movements, which became Shaolin boxing. And, you know, so from there, you could almost extrapolate that much of the martial arts came from yoga. At any rate, so I, I stumbled into this studio. I, I'm going to try to make this long story a little bit shorter. But I stumbled. No, this studio. is great. Oh, this is great. <laughs> and, yeah, this, it is pretty interesting. And I think anyways. And then so this Bikrams was a lot of people have heard of Bikrams yoga and it's like hot yoga, steamy, hundred and like eighty five thousand degrees. It basically <laughs> feels like hell. It's, it's yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. yeah. And it smells like it, does, it too. Yeah, yeah, it stinks. <laughs> and unfortunately the the um the teachers have the same dialogue. Like they're they're drilled and trained in the dialogue and it's like mind numbing dialogue and it never changes. And the poses never change. And having said that I did accept a 60-day challenge to do hot yoga every single day for 60 days, you know, because I like challenging myself like you do, Drew, and, and it, it felt great. I mean, it, it sucked, but it felt great, but I couldn't stay with it. And by the end of the 60 days, not only did I feel great, but I couldn't stand becomes yoga. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, I'm out of here, but I still want to do yoga. This is really cool. It has a lot of interesting things, not quite like the martial arts. I missed I miss the fighting and all that kind of stuff and the dynamic movement and the breath work that I didn't really get in Bikram. So I was like, hmm, I wonder if there's anything else. And then someone told me about Ashtanga yoga. And so I went into the studio and I just ended up miraculously connecting with the first American certified in Ashtanga yoga. And his name is Tim Miller. And he became my next kind of mentor. Tim's an amazing guy, super humble and very funny. And, you know, he's just awesome. And so... And, and Ashtanga was kind of more like a martial art in, in that it what had, had a progressive sequence. And so there's like the first series that you work on and then you kind of graduate or, you know, sort of get promoted or invited into the second series. And then there, there's up to six series. And I was like, oh, cool. So if I get to six series, it's kind of like a black belt. Well, I'm here to tell you, Drew, that I'm still working on the first series. I mean, it, that's like over 15. Wow. It is so hard and so, you know, it's really designed for – a 20 year old, you know, skinny body type. Um, as you can imagine, like some Indian guy, and I know if you're an Indian guy who's not skinny and full of muscles and you're listening to this, then please don't judge me. But <laughs> most of the guys that I've met <laughs> are not that way. And anyway, so, but I love the, I love the Shtanga for a lot of reasons. And I, I did it routinely, like five, six days a week, and I would go to the gym. But it was, still wasn't like a complete system for me. At any rate, let me finish the story by saying, because this is where it comes back to your question. In 2004, so I've been studying Ashtanga now for four years, and I did Bikrams for, you know, a little bit of time, and some of my own stuff from videos. 
And all of a sudden I got the call to go to Iraq, you know, which all of us reserve officers, you know, knew was coming. And, and so I was just waiting for the call. And so I ended up deploying to Baghdad with SEAL Team 1. And, you know, right from the get-go on the plane over there, I was, I was an individual augmentee. So here I am flying into Baghdad to meet up with my SEAL uh, task unit, <coughs> excuse me, with SEAL Team 1. And, you know, I'm, I'm experiencing this crazy anxiety that I hadn't felt in a long time because I, I really didn't, hadn't been training with my team. I mean, I was a, a Navy SEAL lieutenant commander at the time, and I, I'm flying into a combat zone. And, you know, back in the day when I was an active duty SEAL, I had my team of, you know, 15 other guys and we've been running and gunning and, and doing our training. And so when we went to deploy to combat areas or did missions, we were invincible, you know, mentally. And here I was, you know, I hadn't even had time to sight in my weapon and I had all this new gear. Some of it was still in his plastic bags. And I'm thinking to myself, holy crap, what have I gotten into? And so I just start, got up and started to do yoga. You know, I just started to move my body and to breathe deeply and um, by the time we landed in Baghdad, I felt much better. And so then I went to the, um, the task unit, and there was no gym. And so everyone just kind of jogged and did their little PT. And, our, of course, our battle rhythm was really brutal. You know, we'd, you know, tr- we'd start working at about 11 in the morning and, until about 4 a.m. until the night ops got done and then sleep a little bit, have breakfast, and rinse and repeat. And so I usually would wake up at 10-ish. And um, for the first few days, I kind of did the running PT thing. Then I said, you know what? I really got to keep my practice up, my yoga practice. So I found a little cabin, which was along a, a, side, a lake. And this was one of Saddam Hussein's old palace compounds. And so this was one of his guest houses. And it was all pockmarked with bullet holes and <laughs> empty, with blown up. And you could see shell casings and stuff. <laughs> it's just surreal. And here I am doing yoga along this lake in this war-torn, you know, area. And that was the beginning of what I called warrior yoga because, um, you know, literally by the end of deployment, I just felt better and stronger than I did even before showing up because I was doing this practice every day in solitude. I wasn't doing it in a group with people looking at me and me getting distracted. No instructor. It was just me. And that's kind of the foundation of what I present in my book, is that yoga is meant to be for warrior development, one version of it, and for, is a personal practice. It's not like group exercise training, which, which, which is what it's become here in the States. So my personal practice includes, uh, we start out with a breathing exercise, I call box breathing, and there's different forms of that. And then I would do you know, 20 minutes or so of standing poses, or asana, and then I would um, add, because I needed this also to double as my exercise, and I didn't consider yoga to be exercise, I would add like a 20-minute module of high-intensity exercises, such as, you know, burpees and squats and push-ups and stuff like that, or some fighting moves, like combat conditioning style moves, because I love the martial arts. And then I would finish up with some seated poses, you know, twists, back bends, and, you know, um, hamstring stretches and stuff like that, and then a visualization. And I would always visualize myself. Um, going through the day, I would call that a dirt dive, and then I visualized myself home after deployment with my family. I did that every day, every day that I could, if I wasn't out, you know, on some patrol or something. And wow, it was extraordinary. And, and so, sorry for this long soliloquy. That was the f- that was the beginning of what now is called Kokoro Yoga. Man, I love that. No, I love I love the story of that, especially because um, for me, of course, like hearing of a guy that's a seal you just think of like this big tough guy and and men in general when they hear the word yoga i think there there's still a stereotype of oh that's a woman thing you know or like when people hear the term meditation and i'll be honest i only started meditating about a year ago and when people hear that a lot of times they think oh that's so woo woo that's so this weird new age where people are sitting you know yeah they're like sitting alone in a room going, oh, you know, and when I started, you know, I had read book, like, actually, like I had seen free YouTube videos or had listened to like Eckhart Tolle, who's amazing. When you're talking about, you know, life changing books, Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, um, really impacted my life. And so I tried a bunch of different types of, of meditations. And it was interesting as I started seeing that as we calm our minds and we go inward, it has so many benefits, especially to do with things like anxiety or depression. Um, You know, I started 
using a site called groundedmind.com and they have meditations that are like tools. And I think that's why people actually that have tried yoga that I've talked to a lot of times like, huh, I can't figure out why, but I actually really enjoy yoga. And I think it's because they don't realize that it's like a similar form of meditation where you're going inward. Um, what do What do you say, especially to men, what do you say to to men or to people in general that think doing yoga or meditation is like really woo woo <laughs> or so to say, what I'll do you, say, what do well, you tell those people? To to them, uh, if you probably hadn't noticed. Um, so first off, yoga has been conflated to group exercise in this country. And, and one of my missions is to dispel that myth. Yoga was never meant to be group exercise and it's certainly not meant to be women. In fact, in the original, you know, original form, mostly men practiced yoga in ancient times. And it was used for warrior development. In fact, Ashtanga yoga, which means the yoga of the you know, eight limbs, that um, created by Patabi Joyce, that was transmitted to him by um, probably the grandfather of most modern yoga, a guy named Krishmacharya, to prepare young warriors and athletes for the rigors of their combat or sport. And that's why it's very militaristic. Um, in its in the way it's taught, you know, it's very rigid, and it's, you know, you you don't deviate from the sequences, and you know, it's it's counted out, and it's basically very militant, you know, designed like a military program. Uh, whereas, you know, that's that's just one form, and so yoga is meant to be. Uh, and and by the way, Krishnacharya transmitted different forms of yoga to different people. I just finished up a 500 hour training with a guy named Gary Kraskow, and he learned um, from Krishmacharya and his son Desikacharya kind of this notion of the yoga, yoga uh, for um, personal development, which is really what the ultimate yoga for, uh, was for. And this is where it's an individualized practice and, and, you, and you pull together uh, in a, an intelligent manner the different poses, breathing techniques, um, meditation, and even sound to achieve a very specific effect that you're looking for in your life. And it could be based upon the time of your life, you know, and this concept of, you know, you've got the sunrise and the, and the midday and the sunset of your life. So what, you know, what you do for yoga as a 25 year old Navy SEAL is going to be different than what I'm going to do for yoga as, you know, as a 52 year old uh, business guy, you know, as an example, and what you're going to do as a mom is going to be different than what uh, someone else is going to be do as a corporate executive. And also, the, you know, the yoga you do in the morning would be different than the yoga you do in the evening. And the yoga you do before a workout would be different than the yoga you do after a workout. So it really is um, meant to be very adaptive and modular. Another key principle that he put out was that, you know, this idea of like, you know, squeezing your body to fit some perfect form of a pose that some acrobat could possibly do, but most people can, is, is foolish because that's only going to lead to injury. And so what you really want to do is adapt the pose to fit your body, right, which is quite different than how this is taught in the West. But to answer your specific question, you know, I was so profoundly affected by yoga as a developmental tool, and I'm a very practical person, like a lot of Navy, most Navy SEALs are just super practical, just tell me what works, and or I'm going to figure it out, and then everything else is going to get stripped away because I don't have time for it. You know, I've just got so many missions to prepare for, so many, so many um, skills to, to be good at or to master. And so, you know, with yoga, I don't have time for chanting and to, to learn the mythology. And I, I'm not really interested in that. And so I say that I've stripped the foo out of the kung fu of yoga. And, and it really is just simple, modular. I teach it in drills um, and English language, no foofy stuff at all. And so, and when I started Seal Fit in 2007, one of the reasons that uh, yoga, Kokoro Yoga, what I now call Kokoro Yoga, you know, started with Seal Fit is that I, um, I began to train Navy SEAL and Special Ops candidates in these long camps, like it was a warrior monk kind of live-in immersion academy. So, the, in the beginning, it was 30 days long, and, and these, um, these warriors would come live with me for 30 days at our Encinitas facility, and I would train them, you know, from 5 a.m. till about 7 at night for 30 days straight, and we would end it with this 50-hour nonstop crucible event we call Kokoro Camp. Kokoro, incidentally, means merge your heart and your mind in your action. It's a, it's a warrior kind of term out of the Japanese tradition. Anyway, so during this period of time, you know, I had a lot of, I couldn't just beat them up physically for 12 hours a day. 
I, I called it working out and working in. So we had the working out part. That was pretty easy. We used CrossFit methods and seal fit. We developed our own kind of protocol for seal fit training. So we had strength training and stamina and durability and obviously work capacity, which is the high intensity interval training. And we did team training like log PT and, and long rucks and ocean swimming and all that. We did all that. But that left a lot of time to work on both cognitive skills, you know, so leadership and and um, discipline and those things and, and learning about how to be a good you know, teammate. And then an equal part of time to do the working in, which was developing the inner skills of the warrior. Well, it just so happens yoga means integration, right? And so what we're trying to do is to integrate people. And so the skill of yoga, the tools of yoga really help integrate mental, emotional, intuitional, and spiritual capacities that every, every human has. Not only will it develop it, but it'll integrate it. And both are important, you know, because if you develop without integrating, you can be lopsided. So I started to use yoga in, the, in this form that I call Kokoro Yoga to teach Navy SEALs, and they found it extremely effective for developing concentration, mental focus, clarity of decision-making, uh, emotional resiliency, and kind of a... Um, Antidote, or like we, we gave them this antidote to ward off combat related stress. So the, the SEALs who have been through this training with me are, are I'm, I'll put it right out there, even though I can't, I don't have like the stats, but they're less likely to, to suffer from combat related stress, um, aka PTSD, because they front loaded the, the skills to be able to ward off that stress, to be able to main, you know, manage the arousal control, to be able to manage their mental state, to be able to maintain a positive mindset in this, you know, the worst conditions of the world, and, um, and it, it be able to focus on the right things at the right time for the right reasons. And I really attribute all this to the training that I developed that, that I call Kokoro Yoga, like I said. And, and our SEAL candidates, by the way, and I'll stop here, the ones, the, the, the folks who go into Navy SEAL training having trained with me at SEAL Fit have a 90% success rate, you know, which is compared to like 80% fail rate for the general public. Hmm. Wow, that is so hmm. interesting. I have so many questions, Mark, because that, that just blows my mind. But um, I guess the, the first question that I was going to ask is, uh, you kind of mentioned that the, the Navy SEALs have, or the people that go through this Kokoro uh, camp with you have a 90% success rate. So is this designed for those people that are going into uh, hell week or, no, or I wouldn't say the that. Fact, the, okay. The, it's, it's suitable for them. And a lot of the folks who train with us, obviously, we teach them the same principles that I, I teach soccer moms and CEOs because it works in whatever domain that you're seeking to operate in, whatever domain you need to be at your peak performance in. So Kokoro Yoga is about developing your inner world so that you can dominate and structure your outer world for success, if that makes sense. And whether you're going to be a Navy SEAL or whether you're a podcaster or a, a corporate chieftain, it works equally well. But I did design it initially based upon my experience for, because when I, when I launched SEAL Fit, it was originally for special operators. But very quickly, I had a lot of people come and say, hey, you know, that looks wicked cool. And I need the challenge and I want to learn those skills. Can I do it? But I am not going to be a Navy SEAL. And I was like, oh, okay, are you sure you, you know what you're getting into? <laughs> you know, That's true. Drew's like, I want to go do that. I said, I'll bring well, it. Uh, cool. maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I saw the first 10 minutes of Lone Survivor and I saw what they went through, you know, what, or you what you guys still wanted through. to do it. Like, well, well, that's because <laughs> I've heard of people going through it and how they come out of it. Like people that have like not given up or even people that have kind of quit, they still learn something from it. So so what's the difference between seal fit and Kokoro yoga? What's well, the difference between those two programs? Seal, seal fit really is the um, seal fit is really designed to, to, for people who are physically adept already. So, so, you know, Kokoro yoga, anybody can start training Kokoro yoga. I mean, you don't even have, you, know, you could get off the couch and immediately start training and, and the, the yoga will work. It's magic, right? Whereas seal fit, you know, it's it's designed for people who are former athletes or adventure athletes or CrossFitters or, or warrior athletes or industrial athletes, you know, people who need their body for their jobs and, and want to have a lifetime of functional fitness and, you know, are looking for a challenge and really understand kind of the physical culture. Like the physical culture is part of their life. They love it. They wouldn't imagine missing a workout and they want to do fun things when they work out like swing kettlebells and drag logs around and buddy carry. You know, it's, it's not, 
you know, like we were talking earlier, it, it really isn't for beginners um, or for people who aren't structurally sound yet where they're going to get injured. And so we, we spend a lot of time preparing people uh, to, to do the things that we do as seal fit. You know, we have pretty regular standards for Kokoro camp, you know, just jump in it. Cause we, we just don't want you to get hurt. So, you know, some people prepare for over, you know, a year or two years just to come to that training program, Kokoro, the 50 hour thing. Having said that we do have a three day Academy, which is for, it doesn't have any prerequisites. And it's where we're going to basically in a, in skill workshops and, and in a really controlled environment, we're going to teach you all the movements and all the methodology and the philosophy so that you can go out and start to train this way on your own. So that's seal fit. Kokoro yoga, so that's the outer functional fitness kind of aspect. It's hard hitting. It's really externally focused. And we like to think that Kokoro yoga is the internally focused program. It really is the working in versus the working out. And the two of them uh, together form an uh, almost a complete package or Kokoro yoga with any physically externally oriented any any externally oriented program like crossfit or or you know jazzercise for instance or spin cycling if you do the two of them together it's a complete system because mention you know i mentioned earlier yoga is not meant to be exercise even though in the way i teach it it can substitute for exercise it really is about developing your inner your inner domain right developing your mental emotional intuitional and spiritual capacities so Kokoro Camp and um, Seal Fit are both programs that people can pay to come and do out there in California, right? Like they're packaged programs that people can come out there and participate in and leave. Um, so uh, what I just kind of want, I guess I'm just curious because I, I, I'm actually thinking about doing one or two or both of these eventually. <laughs> so like, let's say someone wants to come do it. <laughs> Uh, say I have a friend, okay? I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's like my my friend. I mean, he's <laughs> my friend. He's, he's yeah, my he's, age. He's my so. height. He's my build. He was wondering, could he last through your seal fit program? No, like what what different um, types of seal fit programs are there? Like you said, you mentioned a thirty day thing with a fifty day fifty hour um, thing at the end, and then yeah. seal fit. It's like, is it a twelve hour, twenty four hour? Yeah. So you got to look at it like what are the different programs? I mean, you're you're fit. And so you could jump in and do Kokoro Camp, but we don't recommend it because you might miss some things. Kokoro Camp is an extraordinary experience. Um, it's 50 hours of nonstop physical mental training with a team. Your team becomes, the, the class becomes your team. Um, you know, there, there is no question. Some people don't make it through. You know, we typically have 25 to 30% of the folks just weren't ready and they don't make it. But as you alluded to, they leave with an extraordinary experience. I mean, what, I'd like to tell this real quick story. We had one guy, a guy named Dr. Martin, who made it 20 hours through Kokoro Camp. He left a winner. We make sure everyone leaves a winner and understands their major lessons. Anyways, this guy was so empowered by the whole warrior mentality and team kind of approach. It, it, it literally shattered his paradigms. And he's a school superintendent. And literally, like a month ago, he thwarted what would, would have been a mass casualty and he sent me an email and he was like, he was giving seal fit credit, which was pretty cool, even though he did all the work. And he literally stopped a kid who had brought in a, a weapon in a hundred rounds and was going to use it because Whoa. there was another weapon and, and more rounds in his car. You don't show up at school and walk that stuff into school without intent to use. And he was able to thwart this literally just with his newfound confidence and the courage to step in and do something against all, wow. you know, protocols. So that's the kind of wow. person we have coming to Coral Camp and the effect it have, even if you don't make it the 50 hours. But just the, um, you know, stepping up and committing to something at that level is empowering in and of itself. And then training for it and developing the mental uh, toughness and resiliency. By the time you get to Kokoro Camp, you've already you've already won, right? It's you, you're victorious. We don't recommend people start there, but it, it you know it it's an incredible. Um, we call it a crucible, crucible, where you kind of like smelt character. You come out of it a different person. Uh, we have this saying that you meet yourself for the first time at Kokoro Camp, and life is never the same like it wasn't, you know, for that Patrick Martin, you know, and and probably for a lot of kids that he uh, was able to save. And so the place to start, though, is we'd like people to start at the other end and really begin the training with either the two-day basic course where you t where we teach the f functional fitness skills. And some of the, you know, we introduce the mental skills and then the three-day immersion where we dig into um, kind of the integrated model where we develop what we call the five mountains, physical, mental, emotional, intuitional, spiritual, through the, the whole um, 
seal fit and, and also um, what I call the unbeatable mind mental training skills. So you start there and then uh, an intermediate test would be the 12 hour crucible we call the 20x meaning you're capable of 20x 20 times more go prove it to yourself in this 12 hours and then um, come back uh, six to nine months later and tackle the Kokoro camp so we we look at it not as a one and done type program you know seal fit truly is a, a lifestyle we want you to really embrace the suck and dig in and learn how to train this way and adopt physical culture and learn how to eat um, properly learn how to think properly and learn how to move your body properly and then test it Right. And then through that experience, you know, you grow, you know, significantly, you kind of accelerate your growth as a human. Yeah. So thinking of like the people that are listening to this podcast, the people that follow our accounts, like the every everyday person, um, you know, a lot of them obviously aren't going to have the opportunity or live near even where you're at to do a specific course like that. What where's a great place that anybody can start an affordable way to start? Do you have a specific, like, does your book kind of walk people through the basic guidelines of how to meditate and look inwards? Or do you have, uh, you know, an audio book of some sort that kind of walks people through that process? What, what is a good starting po- place that anybody can start at? Sure. I would say there's, there's three now, uh, and it depends upon what your orientation is. If you're, if you're a physical person, you know, Drew, like you, and, and you want to dig right into the physical training, then my book, Eight Weeks to Seal Fit, is a great like, starter kit. And then we have an online training and community called Seal Fit Online. So that would be kind of the progression there. If you're an executive and you really want to tune up your mental skills and you, and you want to approach uh, integrated training on your own uh, time and not, you don't have time to yet to dive into some of the live events, then um, we have a program called Unbeatable Mind. And so my Unbeatable Mind book is a great place to start. And that's where I really introduce the whole mental model and the breathing and the uh, meditation and the visualization techniques. I, I dabble into them with the Seal Fit book, but I really go deep in Unbeatable Mind. If you're really inclined toward you know more of a yogic path, then Kokoro Yoga really is the entry point. So that, that's where we started this conversation. That book comes out April 12th, and then we're going to launch an online um, kind of community with um, weekly videos and some live streaming stuff um, for stuff that we're doing here in California. And, and then we're going to be affiliate, you know, creating an affiliate program so other people can, can learn Kokoro Yoga and teach it at their CrossFit box or yoga studio or whatever. That is so cool. We'll put links to all the to uh, all of these things in the show notes so that people can access these um, after listening to this podcast. Okay, so I want to back up a little bit. You've mentioned the word crucible a little bit. What is that exactly? And and you talk also about what a crucible is, what it does for for someone, but then also non physical crucibles, you know, and what some like some examples of those are. Sure. Okay. Well, a crucible to us again is is some some challenge, some significant challenge that takes you out of your comfort zone, and through this experience, you get comfortable uh, and intimate with that which you used to be uncomfortable with. You know, I said another way, it's a way to overcome fear. You know, fear is a false evidence or expectation appearing real. You know, one way to overcome fear is to get close to that which you fear, and then you know start to you know peel the onion, so to speak, on some of the skills and competencies around, um, you know, that which you fear, you know, or, or doing that which you fear until you, um, you know, until you can do it, number one, and then you, and then you train so that you can then um, master it eventually. And of course, the fear goes away and, and courage is, repl- you know, there in its place. So, you know, one of you can do this with anything, like if you fear, jumping out of an airplane, then, you know, go learn how to jump, you know, use the air, um, the air tunnel first and, and, you know, in a very safe environment, get comfortable flying and then, you know, begin some static line training and which your groundwork and then static line training. And then eventually you'll see yourself jumping out of an airplane and you'll still have some anxiety about it because that's not real. And you will have fear of death, of course, but you won't fear jumping out of the airplane because you'll, you'll have competencies around that. Um, but when it comes to like really mastering what it means to be a human being and tapping into your fullest potential, what we found is that you can train that, right? That's what I first learned through my martial arts, that you can train yourself to unlock literally and tap into your maximum potential as a human being. And it's literally limitless, I think. 
I mean, it's far more than 20x. When you hit your first 20x, then you're, you're, you're there for the next. And so the crucible helps us benchmark the progress, right? Not, not only does it help benchmark, but it, it, it literally slingshots us up to a higher level uh, of development. And so you do your daily discipline training. You know, you, you've got your training plan and you're doing, going to the gym and, the, and you're doing your yoga and you're doing your breathing and meditation and all that is happening. But, but you can't, you know, as you guys know, you, you really can't um, track that like you can a workout program, right? There's, there's no way to really tell that you're improving until someone says, hey, something's different about you or you know, you just, you know, maybe a crisis hits and you respond to it completely different than you did a year earlier, you know, before you started the practice or you just feel much calmer, you know what I mean? Or you go to the doctor and they say, wow, you know, your, your blood pressure has really dropped and what have you been doing? And you're like, well, I've been meditating. I keep doing that, right? But it's, it's just not as trackable. And so what, what happens with these crucible tests is that it forces you to dig deep, deeper than you're used to, uncomfortably deep. And all that training that you've done, it brings it to the forefront and you end up using it not only to get yourself through the program, but to help others get through the program. And, and so this really miraculous thing occurs. All the inner development, you know, the skills of the inner domain that you've been cultivating come to the forefront and then are presented in the outer domain as skills and competencies of mastery, such as, you know, total control under you know chaotic situations which other people look at you and say wow there's the leader that's the person i want to follow because they're not wigging out right they're in control and it's just because you've been practicing breath control and concentration and meditation for you know a year or two or whatever it is but it shows up in the outer world as these unique traits of the warrior or warrior leader which other people admire and gravitate to because they're really powerful skills and traits and they're you know the traits of selflessness and humility and having an other person focus or, or you need those to get through Kokoro camp or you just won't make it and you know those are the traits and skills that the inner cultivation of meditation and and yoga you know develop uh, so now we we grow through challenge human beings grow through challenge that you know Drew, I think that's one of the big problems and we're both tackling that but you know, we, we have grown up and our society has grown to this uh, place where it's very, very soft and everything comes easy and there's a pill for everything. And, you know, I know we've both railed against the different industries that are just clobbering the human spirit. But, you know, this is really an, um, our, our, our version or our way of fighting back against that tide and giving people an opportunity to thrive again and when i mean by thrive is like they thrive as a whole person where they're embracing you know hard physical work they're embracing mental challenges and mental control and living a lifestyle which is you know integrated and whole and wow does it feel good and is it it's a great example for everyone else yeah i think that's so oh go ahead I was just going to say, and you mentioned not all not all crucibles have to be physical. They're, physical crucibles are particularly useful because they really require you to dig deep. But you know, some of the non-physical crucibles I've done are like a silent. I did a six-day silent retreat. I know there's a classic ten-day vipassana retreat that a lot of people have done. That's a crucible, you know. And I, I've I'm, heard of those. I actually thought of doing one of those if I could be quiet for that long. I know. That's <laughs> why, it's, a, it's a real challenge for, for folks if you haven't done that kind of stuff. And, you know, for, for guys, but on the emotional level, I think many men would benefit from a, an emotional crucible, you know, such as, um, you know, there, there's different experts out there who can take you through journeys to really uh, uncover, you know, your family of origin issues and to start working through that stuff. And everyone's got them and they all show up in your personality flaws and we all have them, right? And so, most guys think therapies just like yoga. They think therapies for either broken people or sissies, and that is so far from the truth. I mean, if you have a fitness coach and you have a mental coach, why not have an emotional coach? That's all a therapist is, and we should, you know, rebrand them emotional coaches. And so, you know, for instance, I'm doing a um, a family therapy session this week. Now, that's a little bit of a crucible for me. You know, <laughs> it's going to be challenging because I've got. You know, I've got some, um, you know, my stepdaughters are in the business with me along with my wife. And, you know, so it was, you know, issues have come up, as you can imagine. So there we go. And um, those are yeah. examples of, of non-physical crucibles. 
This is, mm, yeah, like and that's that. so cool. Like, and this is like really stuff that I, my, my mind has been open to the past year, but as like 10, five, 10 years ago, I'm like, this is weird. This isn't me, right. but it is me now. Things like, you know, like you mentioned, thrive. It's so easy just to go through and survive this life, like just go through, survive. And it's so easy. And especially here in America, it's so packaged and pretty and it's, it's just so accessible. But then, you know, to thrive, physical challenges, mental challenges, emotional challenges, what really is what we grow from. And so that's, I'm starting to realize that. And then now, kind of like what you were talking about, a family therapy session, vulnerability is just something that I used to think was a weakness. And I'm like, you know, to be vulnerable is to be perceived as weak. And now I'm learning how much of that is a strength and how much more happiness you can bring into your life through being vulnerable, which is hard for, I think, men mostly because we're, we're not wired that way, but it's... It's great. It's been a growing a growing experience for me personally, but I'm super excited about learning more about Kokoro Camp and Seal Fit, and um, I really am intrigued. I'm going to dive into this stuff. And right, yeah. yeah. Well, and what I like what both of you guys have alluded to, um, you know, and as you both you guys were talking about um, going inwards, and I love what you said, Mark, about you know people that have been doing the program feeling like they kind of are finding themselves for the first time or Drew talking about how in society, a lot of us are just quote surviving. It's because we're walking around like zombies. You know, we're all basically unconscious walking around living a programmed life based on our hardships or our experiences or how we grew up. And with all of everything that's around us, it's, it's interesting that people think it's odd or weird when we talk about these things like meditation or your programs, um, like the ones that you're doing in yoga, like it's, it's weird to go, go quote inward, but it's actually weird to not. It's weird. It's weird that none of us are actually taking the time for ourselves to sit and reflect and hear, you know, basically from our own being, like, you know, what we need, what we want, connecting inwardly, connecting emotionally, you know, without, without doing that, without, do, you know, people would be embarrassed before to say, oh, I'm going to counseling or I'm going to therapy. And like Drew said, men, especially, you know, talking about feelings, but, you know, it, it's weird to not express your feelings and to not go inward and to not own who you are and find your life path through those means and to shut down emotionally. Um, you know, there's no growth from that. Yeah. Mark, really quick, um, before we, I get to the next question, can you give us some examples of what some of your personal physical crucibles are that you've done in the past or that you do like maybe once a year or twice a year? Just curious. Sure. I, I want to say one thing about, um, what we were just talking about. It's tragic not to go inward, um, because your external world is a f- reflection of your internal world, right? So if someone mm-hmm. is chaotic on the inside or emotionally, um, you know, unattainable on the inside, then that, that's how their external world is going to evolve, right? And so it's really important to win on the inside so that you can, you know, so you can win on the outside. And I think that's a key point that people need to understand. Um, so personal crucibles, um, of course, you know, one of the big ones in my life was Hell Week, which is the Navy SEAL crucible. That's where the idea for Kokoro Camp came from. And that was uh, 24, uh, I'm sorry, six days of nonstop, nonstop training around the clock. Incredible. Um, so things that I try, I try to have a something difficult every day. You know, I, I start out, you know, like a lot of people with a cold shower and I have a morning routine and then I hit up a, an operator wad or comparable workout for an hour and a half to two hours. And so I get that done in the morning and the rest of the day is easy. And then we do some, a little bit harder version of that, uh, at least, uh, once a week. And so that might be like a four hour workout, you know, and then once a month we have a challenge. And so I like a monthly challenge. The one I was just talking this morning about with my, my friend, John, who's one of my seal fit coaches who, who, you know, coaches here for me and he's a full-time employee. He's a great guy, young guy. He's like, okay, I think I got our next challenge. And I said, what, what do you got? And he goes, a 60 minute wall, wall sit, 60 minute of accumulated oh, time. And I was like, oh my that gosh. sounds awesome. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, okay, I'm in. So let's, let's yeah. do this tomorrow. Oh and my he, gosh. He was just finishing up five minutes and his legs were shaking. He was like, 
Oh my god, that's gonna be hard. <laughs> you guys are terrible. That is crazy, man. And, I, that know, is such a guy thing. I can't imagine any woman right, being so, like. But can do yeah. these, then you just scale them. So if six. A woman man, wouldn't. I mean, I would watch you guys and like eat popcorn. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that sounds really exciting. For, um, yeah. for the last soft academy, we did an, a sixty-one minute plank hold. Oh man, that is a long time. Yeah, it's a long time, and, and, and a good chunk of us <laughs> didn't put our knees down once, and myself included, in 61 minutes. What? We could have kept going. Yeah, for sure. You didn't put your – you held a plank for 61 minutes, Wait, and you didn't put, or you didn't you put your knees down? Yeah, continuously. Oh. You nope. didn't put your knees down. Oh, not once. Not once. That is that's a, no, So that's a mental that's, challenge. It's all mental. There you go. Um, mental. It is. I agree. I agree with that 100%. It is. It I is disagree mental. that it's all mental because I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay. It really all hurts right, my right. abs to so do a 1%. plank for a minute. But sure. I mean, you guys can say it's all. No, I just want some people. Yeah, to get it's some probably ideas. mental. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll let you guys know how it goes. No, I just want some people. I want people to get some ideas or see some examples of what your bi- your body and mind is capable of doing sure. if you get to that point. It's not like one person is just going to be like, okay, I haven't yeah, worked out in years. You I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah, yes. and I think Work. another th- a key thing is is just how you phrased it. It's about pushing yourself physically past the capabilities you can think. Right. So I think for the average person, you know, say you're used to doing a 20 second plank, you know, instead set the timer for one minute and Correct. push yourself to that point. Just knowing exactly I've only right. done then, it for 20 seconds, but right. I'm going to hold it for a minute because I know that my body's capable of more. I just I I'm scared because it hurts. You know, just right. try it. And, and, yeah. and so we teach very specific skills to make the training, the physical training, bearable, right? And we call them big four skills. And one is uh, to control your breathing. And the second is this uh, a positivity process. We call it feeding the courage wolf. And the third is to visualize, so see yourself uh, obviously succeeding. And the fourth is micro goals. And so how that would work in the plank hold is – you know, we would do it as a group and we say, okay, you take it. You know, we, we would literally breathe together, inhale, exhale. And then I would have everyone say together, uh, easy day, we've got this, hoo which is a Navy SEAL term for, you know, bring it, we got it. And then um, I would say, uh, feel the steel. And, that, you know, what I meant there is visualize yourself as a steel beam, right? Just holding that plank as a steel beam. And then we would do that for just 10 rounds, just 10 rounds, right? And we get to the end of 10 rounds and then, you know, we maybe uh, someone says it tells a joke because humor is another great way to take your mind off the pain, right? Mm, and then I, I say, okay, guys, let's do another 10 rounds of that or we'll do 100 rounds of that. And, you know, sure enough, you know, 20 minutes have gone by and everyone's just feeling really good because they've taken their mind away from the pain. And that's the point is to, mental management is to focus on not the pain, focus on performance. Focus on, you know, getting your mind clear about something that's positive and, and that's going to get you toward victory and not failure. Mm, okay. Like that. Yeah, that's great. Um, so we're kind of running short on time here, Mark, but I wanted to talk really quickly before we wrap up about your nutrition. You talked about daily routines. What sure. is What types of foods do you eat nowadays and um, do you talk about nutrition to your – uh, community at all and if so what's your philosophies on nutrition just sure. curious yeah we do talk about it. in fact we have these things called the three pillars three pillars are, are meant to be equally as important one is fueling one is rest and recovery which includes sleep and the third is integrated training if you take care of those three your foundation will be rock solid and then you can live a life of excellence you know through different strategies on top of that so fueling the first and most important fuel is air oxygen and so we teach people how to breathe properly so they're getting a full measure full you know full meal every breath slowing down their breath cycles and breathing through their nostrils and all that and then the second most important food is water fresh water hydration so we teach, you know, how to hydrate and when to hydrate and all that. That's really important. And then specifically what you're asking about is the hard food, which actually is the third most important. And, um, but long term, obviously, it's crucial. And so we have a philosophy because seal fits are, 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 seal fit athletes are austere athletes, very busy, you know, on the go. It's impossible to eat a perfect, you know, diet, perfect paleo or zone diet. And so we have a rule called the 80-20 rule based on the Pareto principle. So 80% of the time eat, you know, uh, lean meats, uh, lots of fat and fresh vegetables and nuts and berries and that kind of stuff. Stay away from sugar, anything, you know, that that breaks down is sugar. So bread, pasta, you know, especially processed uh, stuff like that. And... um, 
and do that 80% 80 of the time. And then 20% of the time, if you're doing that 80% of the time, the 20% it doesn't matter. You know, have a pizza and beer once a week or whatever. Um, it really doesn't matter because your body, your metabolic engine will be so, so tight. And it's good to, to change it up every once in a while. Um, and also if you're a purist, you know, if you go on deployment or if you travel, then you're going to get hit because those foods that you travel are not going to be, your, your, your body will be too sensitive to them. Now, the other thing we're exploring with this ketogenesis, you know, we really, really like fat. Fat is critical for us. And so I tend to go ketogenic on a uh, daily basis. I, my last meal, so through intermittent fasting and eating fat, I'm in ketosis through my workout period in the morning. You know, so I, I'll eat my last meal at like 7 o'clock at night. I won't eat another meal until 11 or 12 the next day. The only thing I'll have is um, my Bulletproof coffee, which is my coffee with coconut oil and butter in it. And, um, and I just have just tremendous energy. You know, it's like it gives me the, this diesel engine kind of running throughout the morning. Now, it's not, you know, it's not ketogenesis isn't appropriate for, 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 you know, quick burn kind of performances like CrossFit or, you know, uh, most athletic events. But it is great for endurance training and for going the long haul. So we're exploring with that, and I do have kind of a in-house book. Uh, it might be an ebook, but it might be bigger. I'm calling um, uh, Unbeatable Fuel, which is going to explore ketosis in a little bit more detail. That'll be coming out later this year. Okay, no, that's really interesting because I'm actually currently in the process of doing a 30-day keto experiment uh, mixed in with some intermittent fasting, very similar to the things you're talking about. Um, but I am supplementing with these things called exogenous ketones, and so it's really interesting. Um, but I, you know, I still eat, you know, a ketogenic diet, uh, for the most part. Um, uh, but I'm kind of learning how my body feels. And it's interesting before eating six meals a day, seven meals a day, sometimes it's great just to eat pretty much two main meals. I have my bulletproof coffee in the morning and then I go and do a workout and I'm totally fine during my workouts, um, uh, on a fat, in a fasted state, which before I'm like, okay, that's a, that's a big no, you don't want to do that. But it's interesting how your body adapts, and I feel great, and I can tell it's running on fat for fuel, which is more efficient. So it's really cool. I'm only about you know a little over a weekend, feeling great, and it's uh yeah, I'm doing some experimenting there. That's as cool. Well. That's that's exactly what I do, and I've been doing it for over a year, and I feel fantastic. And you know, I eat a lot, probably a lot fewer calories than most people for a six foot, you know, two uh-huh. hundred pound guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, it's just because of the fat intake. You know, when you're ketogenic, ketones have 40,000 calories of energy versus, you know, 2,000 calories for, for glycogen, you know, when you're glycolytic. And it's really extraordinary. Yeah, I think people are kind of coming around to that. It just takes some education and some training because it's such, uh, you know, it's so new to some people. They're like, wait a second, you're eating fat. I thought fat was bad. So it just takes some retraining. But um, anyways, uh, okay, we kind of want to wrap up here because we know you're, we're short on time, Mark. But um uh, what we do is we kind of just do some really quick, fast questions called the lightning round. Uh, really easy going questions that are just kind of, you know, pretty easy going as far as like, you know, you don't have to. They, he means that they're not important <laughs> questions. We're going to ask yeah, you things yeah, that fun. have nothing to do with business or really probably even health and fitness in general. They're fun. They're funny. And the key is you have to answer as quickly as possible. And the first thing that comes to your mind. All right. Bring it on. Okay. So quick question, first question. Uh, well, first of all, have you ever been overweight before, Mark? Uh, I have never been overweight. Okay. So my first question for you, obviously, and I ask every guest on the show, would you ever do Fit to Fat to Fit as one of your crucibles or challenges? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd laugh. He's no, like, no. I, 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 I won't. I, I just don't. I don't want to. I, I think that would stress the body out significantly, and I don't want to do that. I couldn't and imagine the, walking around. I don't even know how you did that. <laughs> <laughs> and the mind too. It is. It was way more mental and emotional than I ever thought it would be. Because I, I thought it was just going to be a physical thing, gaining sixty pounds of pure or seventy six pounds of pure fat. <laughs> it was one of the hardest things ever. I couldn't but imagine. <laughs> it definitely woke me up and definitely changed my perception about how what it feels like to be overweight. Because I've never been that. So, yeah. 
I did get through it. Once is enough, though, for me, and most people say no, so I'm not surprised. Just had to throw it out there. All right. Maybe one of your SealFit coaches would be willing to do it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, you start you started an entire podcast, and 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 so you know there was a good reason. So your your why was very strong. I would have to have a very strong why to do it. I'm That's saying true. I couldn't do it or I wouldn't do it, but my <laughs> I don't have the why right now. Exactly. That's a good point. Okay. Next question. Weirdest nickname you've ever been called? <laughs> okay. Uh, I had two in my life. Um, one of them I'm really proud of. And when I was in the SEALs, my nickname was Cyborg. Um, and that oh. was given to my teammates um, <laughs> because I just, you know, I would never stop. I was like a robot when I came to the physical. Yeah. And, but when I was in college, my name was, my nickname was Jigs. What? Jigs. Jigs. What's that? Well, it's short for Gigolo. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I wasn't proud so, of I am so, so glad weird. I so glad that I asked a great that question. question. Yes. So glad I asked that question. Okay, where's the weirdest place you've done yoga, Mark? Oh man well I think in at Saddam Hussein's, you know, palace was pretty Seriously? freaking weird. And <laughs> in a in too. a C one thirty flying into Baghdad. I mean try to beat that one too. That's true, man. Okay, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Together. Okay, if you could be invincible for one day, what would you do? Uh, <laughs> I would get Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton in a room and just have them duke it out. <laughs> that really, I you think just, a lot of Americans. You're invincible. Would love they're to see in a room that. together and you like <laughs> slap Donald Trump across the yeah. face. And of course, he thinks it's Hillary. And, and you we know, were, that man would have and no gumption. Sure You'd be like, I'll do it. filmed and stream lived so that neither of them had the opportunity to be just <laughs> funny. Okay, do you still do you still say looking good, feeling good, out of being Hollywood when you're going through a mental, tough mental training or physical training? Every day. Every, every day. Yeah. Oh my so gosh. See, I did it was funny through physical challenge every day. <laughs> when I was asking Drew who we were gonna podcast, he said, You know how I like to say looking good, feeling good, out of being Hollywood? I'm like, Yes. He's like, That's from this guy. I was like, Oh Yeah, because I remember you told us about that. That's what helped you do a thousand burpees or something. It helped you get through a thousand burpees or something like that. It was like yeah, seventeen hundred or positive mantra like that is like magic. I mean, it just takes your brain to different places and you know I love it. I love it. Okay. Time. It warps time. Okay, my last question. What's your favorite joke? Or a really funny joke you've heard lately? Okay. Uh, well, this is a good one. So a Navy SEAL walks into a bar. You sure I can say this? On- oh, yeah, you can say ahead. whatever you want on this podcast. <laughs> Navy SEAL walks into a bar, and he sits down next to this really hot girl. And he kind of ignores her, but he's fiddling with his watch. So she starts to feel a little put out. So she goes to him, and she says, well, is someone late for a special date? And he goes, oh, hi. He goes, no, actually, I'm just checking out my new Apple iWatch. It's got some cool features. And she goes, oh, really? Like what? And he says, well, for instance, there's this cool app I downloaded, and it can tell me anything that's happening within a 10-meter radius and telepathically. She goes, no way. She goes, what's it telling you right now? And he says, well, it's telling me you're not wearing any panties. And she goes, <laughs> she, she starts laughing. She goes, it must be broken because I am. And he looks at it, and he taps, and he goes, oh, shoot, it's an hour fast. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's a good one that's actually really good that's a great way to end the podcast that is awesome that's a good one mark thank you for sharing that one um okay really quick before we go where can people find you social media websites the book all of that so we can put it on the show notes all right so um here let's talk about the book the book uh the website for the book where you can get a free the first chapter free and then i think a um also, like 30 days or some sort of promotion for the online, I don't know what it is, is warrioryoga.com. The original title of the program was Warrior Yoga. I had to change it to Kokoro Yoga, which I like better, but it was for a trademark issue. So warrioryoga.com. Uh, if you want to just go order the book, go, you can do it at Amazon, but if you want the free chapter and the other goodies, go to warrioryoga.com. Sealfit.com is full of just re- really wickedly cool videos, and my blog and podcast can be found there. And that's where all the information is about SealFit. And then unbeatablemind.com is where the mental toughness training is. And, um, you know, I guess that's it. And also we have, of course, all that kind of other social media stuff. Which is mostly, yeah, Facebook's, Twitter, all that stuff. Right. And just search search for SealFit on both of those. (laughs) 
Gotcha. Seal fit. It's mainly okay. seal fit on, on Facebook. And then, you know, I have a Mark Divine Twitter and it's gotten out of control. Actually, I, I am, um, I'm not quite sure where all that social media is going. I know it's really valuable, but, um, I can't, yeah, I can't even track it anymore. It's like a full-time overwhelming. job. It's overwhelming. It. I, I get it. Yeah. I yeah. can't get back to everybody, you know, to know. share a message and move on, but yeah. right. Awesome. Well, awesome. thanks. Thank you so much. No, thank you so much. I love, like, this was so interesting for me, especially because I hadn't heard your story. I hadn't heard about, you know, going from a Navy SEAL to what you do now. And I love that you integrate everything, not only, you know, physical strength and helping people push back past their physical barriers, but especially the mental and emotional component. Because I think that's, like you said, even more important because how you are on the inside reflects everything on the outside. So I love your message. Um, Everybody go check him out. Go check out his website. Follow him on social media. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Uh, once again, for your service, for all you do for so many people, we, we appreciate you being in this industry and, and uh, in this field. So I know that you do a lot of good in this world. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Who ya? Yeah. Appreciate it. Who ya? Who ya? Thanks, Mark. Uh, we'll be in touch, man. Okay. I look forward okay. to seeing you at Kokoro Camp, Drew. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, man. He's there. in front row. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. See ya. See ya. Bye. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us for another great uh, podcast with Mark Devine. We hope you enjoyed it. We know we did. Uh, We took a lot out of this uh, episode. We hope you did as well. Um, Once again, please visit our show sponsors, keygenix.com, K-E-G-E-N-I-X.com. Use code fit to fit for a 15% off discount code and go check out dollarworkoutclub.com. We appreciate them as our show sponsors because we wouldn't be able to do this without their support. And we wouldn't be able to do this without your guys' support. So please continue to subscribe to our podcast, listen to them, share them with friends and family. We promise to deliver great high quality content to you guys each week. So please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and share it with your friends or family. Leave us a five-star review and a comment as well. We read all the comments on there, you guys. We really appreciate those little things that you guys do for us. Um, Please follow Len and I on social media to stay in the know of uh, upcoming events, things that are happening, big announcements. Um, All my social media handles, as you know, are at fit to fat to fit F-I-T number two, F-A-T number two, F-I-T on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, even on Snapchat, you guys, my website is fit to to fit.com and I have a newsletter. You can sign up there to kind of stay in the know as well. Yeah. And my website is the number two fit at home.com. I have a blog on there. Um, one of the most popular articles I have that I think every woman should read is one about hormones. Um, so go ahead and type in hormone imbalance at two fit at home and you'll find that. Um, I have other great content and recipes and workouts on there as well. And you can find me on social media using two fit at home as well. So go ahead and give me a follow or sign up for my newsletter and that's a great way to stay in touch with me. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you back here next week with another great episode on the Fit to Fit Experience podcast. Thank you guys. See you guys.